Hey everyone, welcome to Scrapbook Live January 2020. I am so excited to be here for this session. I like to get together and scrapbook with friends. So that's what this is all about. If you're catching the replay, then I hope that you're going to pull out your scrappy goodies and scrapbook along with me. And there is a chat function. So if you are here for the live session, then uh, you can chat. There's like a little chat option where you can type in there. You can be live on camera, which is super fun. I love to see that other people are playing along. And you can also just lurk and just kind of hang out with us and do your own thing. All of the above are totally welcome. Teresa says, hi all. And Jeanette says, hello everyone. Heather says, hi everyone. And Kathy says, hello everyone. I don't think I've joined this before on video live. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> hello, I can totally see her, she was waving. So that's super fun. Uh, Karen says she's actually did you scrapbooking along this time. Yay! I love that. I love that we can all come together and do this um, fun crafting stuff in our own ways. Um, I am traditionally a paper scrapbooker. I've dabbled or tried to dabble a little bit into the digital stuff and I haven't made my headway, but I tend to do a lot of work on the computer. So I want to play with the paper and have fun. Uh, Kathy says she's going to try to scrap. Y'all might see my princess twirl through here. Yay. I love that you have princesses. Today, I am your head mistress from the Magical School of Scrap Happy and Beyond as we are preparing for Load 220 Memories Managed. That's what's still up on the board right there. And <laughs> do we have four houses? I'm guaranteeing that we probably do. So here we go. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different. Normally I use a kit from the Wild Hair Kit Club and Wild Hair Kits wonderful but this time I ordered my kit too late I'm not sorry I'm so sorry I ordered it late so it's not here and um, I'm really excited because I think some of the new things will actually get to sneak into my kit since I ordered it late so like that's terrible but next month I'll have all the some some fun new goodies to play with <laughs> so Jeanette says I have such a clean desk that's on the front side of the camera, not on the back side, let's be clear. <laughs> that, but it is so much better. So if you have caught the scrappy organization sessions that we did this past January, I did one like almost every Wednesday, um, not on the 1st of January. So we did four of them. We tackled um, organizing stamps and thickers and templates on the first one. And then we tackled embellishments. That was a big one. And look how nice my cart looks now. It's so pretty. And then we tackled paper and paper. Ooh, that's a big category. Karen's like, whew, I don't have that one right <laughs> now. I can see the sigh of relief on her face. Um, but yeah, we tackled paper and Facebook un <laughs> unfriendly uh, cut off the very end. So there's actually like a little bonus session where we finish up our chat that we were having, but we got through most of our content before they chopped me off. It's so weird because it wasn't like a time issue. It was just a glitch. Um, Cause I looked into that and I'm like, did I go too long? Like I thought the other one was longer. It was, it was fine. Um, that Karen says, I do have lots of digi paper. I believe that. I bet like dealing with having enough space is even worse when you're doing your digi scrapping. <laughs> yeah, that's what all of my digi friends have said. Like storage is an issue. <laughs> Different kinds of storage. Sharon says she's just checking in. She has two broken wrists. Seriously? Oh my gosh. Uh, that is terrible. Please heal well. I would say heal fast, but I'd rather see you heal, heal well. So please heal well. So, uh, yeah, careful with those. Oh my goodness. Um, so I do have a plan since we don't have a kit, we will still have a draw because Allison is super cool with that. Um, 
but I have some stuff. And sticking with this whole theme that we have with Harry Potter, I actually pulled out some photos that I haven't scrapped yet from my trip to the Wizarding World at Universal Studios. And I, I've got a couple of them. So I've got two pictures from our trip that we did there, and I plan to use those today. I pulled out um, a package of Harry Potter stickers, and these are actual branded Harry Potter stickers from Paper House Productions. So that's kind of fun. And oh, there's a few more there. And then I've got some gold glittery thickers out because we know I love some thickers, and I thought that would make good titles to go with this package of paper that I purchased from Color Play, which is Photo Play, right? Color Play. Um, so it is their Wizard World collection. It came out last year, I think, but um, it looked kind of perfect and I thought that would be really fun. But rather than just, you know, pull up some random supplies and scrapbook some random photos, I thought it would be extra good to uh, use one of our Scrap Happy sketches. So, okay, uh, nice, I have ideas for that. I missed who did the collection. It was from Photoplay, it's part of their Color Play collection. So Photoplay paper, and it's the color, it's one of their Color Play lines, which I think they're just set up a little bit differently. But yeah, I can show you some of the papers that are in there. Um, there's a good variety of papers. Uh, these are um, magic, these are Wizard World related. You got, oh, it looks like there's two sheets of every one. We got the, the t some ties on here and we got stars on the back. There are some silhouettes of uh, potentially someone flying around on a broom with a lovely yellow plaid on the back. And we've got some floating candles. Oh, those are nice. And some colors. And here is some um, stripey paper. And on the back, there's like words and they say things like, intuitive, loyalty, intelligence, bravery, patient, daring, leadership, chivalry, cleverness, preservation, willful, wise. So there's some cute text. Yeah, some Quidditch, I know. <laughs> and uh, then we've got this green one and it has a cut apart sheet on the other side. So it's a pretty fun collection. And this is not um, branded Harry Potter stuff. It's kind of like inspired by kind of collections. I know that it's tough to kind of play the line. I know even with our load challenge, like I use, um, we're talking about the text, we're talking about the movies, but I'm not using any graphics or images or anything that kind of, comes into question because it's more like a class at university or something, our own scrapbooking class rather than, uh, you know, um, using the stuff. So, um, yeah, so we're going to, I'm going to start with using this sketch. It is the December sketch from uh, the Scrap Happy family. And if you're playing along at home, <laughs> you can just sight the crap out of your leg. <laughs> I know, Heather. I know. It's, uh, yeah. So this is the sketch that I'm going to use. And if you would like to have a better look at it, I actually made this sketch and the sample publicly available just for today. Um, actually, maybe not just for today. I'll leave it up. Um, I put it onto the scraphappy.org blog. So you can go, will we be able to watch a recording? Yeah, there's um, a recording of this session um, and I post it up on YouTube. It's usually up soon-ish afterwards and I send out a replay link. Um, yeah, so the sketch will be available. You can go and check it out. They're usually just for members, but I thought this might be kind of fun and uh, yeah, you can go to scraphappy.org and then 
look at the blog link in the menu and under the blog, it should be the first one. It might not have a graphic because I don't think I slated a graphic into there. So you might have to just see. It'll say like blog, sketch, scrapbook live. It'll say something like that. Okay, that lets you have a peek at what we're doing. And if you want to use the sketch too, then we can all play along together. Okay, so I think what I'm going to start with is actually, I've got one of us um, hanging out on Diagon Alley. This is this image here. And then I have another picture of us hanging out um, in front of Hagrid's Cottage. And that is this picture here. And I think I'd like to start with this one. So I think so. Um, oh, I've got something hiding up here. So I did pull out something. I have this um, die cut image and this was from uh, the, from one of my cut, it's, it was a cut file that came with one of my wild hair kits. So that was one of their exclusive die cuts. And I thought that maybe I would use that on one of these pages. Okay, I'm gonna dig in and get started. You'll notice I didn't pull out a bunch of embellishments. I really didn't know. And I thought with these sheets, having some graphic images and stuff that maybe I would just kind of play with some of that. And um, I didn't have a bunch of, um, a bunch of stuff on the sample either. So I think this will be good. Okay, let's pick a background paper. I kind of like this hairy flying around paper. I love this candle paper. Oh my gosh. Like, I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> Nadine says she had, she made it and she had to run errands after work and she just got home. <laughs> Heather said, good thing I got a pattern of Baby Yoda. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with Baby Yoda. And if you hadn't seen, oh, I'm almost scared to tell you, Ink Road Stamps, they had a Baby Yoda set that just released on pre-order. They sold out in their first pre-order, then she released it again and they're sold out again. <laughs> Up and coming. I'm so excited. Why is it so cute, right? That Mandalorian. Um, yeah. Shala says, or is it Shala or Shayla? Sorry if I said your name wrong. I have some of that paper, but I don't want to scrap more pictures of Universal Studios yet. Is that weird? No, it's totally fine. I, uh, I was just, you know, and it's funny because when we actually do load, we're not really scrapbooking about Harry Potter or going to Universal Studios or, you know, any of those kind of things. We're taking the inspiration from the film, from the books, and we're telling our own stories. So it's completely inspired, but unrelated, right? So it's not like you're actually scrapbooking about this stuff. But this just was too good of an opportunity for me to play. <laughs> Uh, she, she says, I'm hoarding my pictures instead of my paper. <laughs> That's awesome. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So I have just been super excited. Um, we have been, uh, we had a very short registration period for this load challenge that's coming up, load a day challenge. If you're catching this on the replay, sorry. You missed out because registration ends tonight. Um, but uh, we, we've we signed so many people into the challenge, which is kind of what I thought. I'm like, there's a few people out there that kind of like this Harry Potter thing. I think this might be popular. <laughs> and like, I'm a pretty good fangirl. <laughs> and... Uh, I really enjoy um, thinking about, um, I think the whole story behind it is amazing. I think all of the layers and the details are amazing. And I've done a couple of little deep dive things like forays into podcasts. I've done a couple of those where I've listened to like, where they kind of analyze every single chapter of every single book and then the movies and <laughs> You know, I think it's it's good to go in deep. 
when you really love something. Oh, I like this tie paper a lot too. And I like the night sky paper. Oh, there's just some good things. Oh, I think I like this. I want to use a little bit of that. So on my sketch, I've got like a background paper, obviously, and you can do a background. And then there's like layers behind the photo. And so I'm just kind of setting myself up for those layers so that I can do that. And uh, some paper packs actually have a um, cutoff strip that you can use, but this one isn't one of those ones. So I'll have to, oh, wait a minute. What can I do here? This one is. So maybe it was just that certain one that I chopped up. Oh yeah, there's our mostly usable strips. So it must be just that one pattern because it didn't have something on the back. <laughs> Making sure that I chopped up the right part, but it's the cutoff strips. <laughs> Sharon says, I like using those strips. And Jacqueline says, I have Harry Potter paper and a stamp set and we've never been there. We did go to the Harry Potter exhibit at the Science Center. It's totally okay. It's totally okay to have Harry Potter stuff if you've never been there. Is this a good enough size? It says, uh, I love the smell of chlorine in the morning because I'm a swim coach in the summer. So that's, uh, it's uh, my Coach Alice mug. Very sweet gift, gift from some swimmers. Okay, so I think I will use this. And yes, those strips are fabulous. So um, I'm glad that I spotted that there were more of them. So I'm gonna cut these off. And then I will have some strips to play with. Ooh, I think that's just too good. Oh yeah, that's super good. Okay, I think I'm gonna make that my big backdrop behind the photo. And then it's gonna have a couple more layers underneath there, but that's gonna look amazing. Okay. So what do I wanna do? This is four by six. If I do six by eight, that should be quite, well, maybe it's a little longer. Hmm, yes. Just yes in here. If I do eight, maybe I'll just do an eight by eight square to start with, and that should give me a good start. And I can adjust as needed. Probably have to shrink it a little bit to get my little strips of journaling underneath like in the graphic, but uh, yeah, I think it'll be good. And with this cut apart file, um, it's, it's quite large and I think I'd like to kind of spread it over two sections. So I think what I'm gonna do is kind of cut apart the cut apart, <laughs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> gonna cut apart the cut apart. So. Um, have you seen any of my videos from Creativation? Because I just recently went to Creativation, which if you're unaware, um, it is a huge trade show for scrapbook retailers. And they go to this trade show and they have the opportunity to shop for their stores. And I just went down there. My husband came and we filmed tours in the booths and Teresa says, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we filmed tours. We did a close to 40, 40 videos from creativation this year. And it was, Oh, it's so fun. Like I just had the best. This is probably my favorite one actually. Um, so we had the best, well, maybe my husband didn't have the best time. Let's be real. He had to work, <laughs> but I had the best time and I was able to make a bunch of videos and see all the new products and just, it was fantastic. And you know, there's some years where I've heard people say, well, there just really wasn't anything new or that really wasn't that exciting or those lines all look the same or, you know, like, I don't know. I'm not a negative Nelly. I look at stuff and I'm like, oh, I want this. I want this. Um, 
but I think that um, this year there were so many key things that I'm like, that was so good. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get this. There, there was a lot. Okay, so these are very quite bright and white and really standing out off this paper. And I think I would like to kind of tone them down with a little bit of something messy. Let's see here. Oh my God, that's messy. It's hanging around. So I want it to be close and handy. <laughs> I have something close and handy in a color that would work. Where's my, I've got like a little bottle of golden Heidi shine somewhere here. Somewhere here. Hmm, I thought it was actually up there, but it is not with the other colors. Okay. Ooh, what's that one? Oh, no. Darn. Yeah, I just want to splatter this thing. Well, maybe if I'm not going to splatter it, maybe I can do something else with it. But I think a little bit of gold and shiny on the stars, like make them like little speckly. Yeah, Heather, I need a little color. That's right. So I think a little bit of shiny stuff on there. I might have to grab a little splatty mat kind of thing and maybe maybe I actually put something away. <laughs> that would be shocking. <laughs> maybe I actually put it away and I'll go and have a peek. So I'm going to go on a little trip. Be right back. Um, well, she's gone. I can show you my uh, layout. I did the same. Uh, Let me put you at. Okay. Uh, there we go. Pin you up. Right. Oh, did I, did I pick the, the right one? That's hilarious. I, I saw your face and then all of a sudden <laughs> it moved. <laughs> there. I, I did the same uh, uh, sketch that I just have been taking a picture and posted in our group, but uh, it was the same sketch that Alice is doing um, for my layout I did yesterday. So I'm going to do the other sketch um, for November for this one, but I kind of took it a little bit different. I used flowers for my corner embellishments instead of stars because I'm working on an album for my birthday. And so okay. I did flowers and then I used two pictures instead of one because I don't know if I've ever done a layout with just one picture. And so, and then I'll, I'll read you my journaling on the bottom. So I have uh, twin younger brothers and, um, but they're uh, six foot four. So I said, dear baby brother, you may always be taller, but I will always be older. <laughs> so, I just thought it was a sentiment I've never really uh, scrapbooked about. And my birthday album seemed like the perfect place to say, well, I'm another year older. So you can tell that he's much taller than I am, even though I'm pretty tall at five foot eight, uh, five foot nine. But, you know, he'll always be taller, but I'll always be older. So, <laughs> you know, there's something about being the older sister. Uh, I have two younger brothers. <laughs> that is a lovely page. Cute story. Everybody's loving it. So thank you so much, Amy. This is perfect when uh, people are like, hey, I can step in because you're like walking away from the camera. So I got to shake this up a little. And then I'm going to, I grabbed like just a, a splatty mat kind of thing. And I've got my stars. I grab some paper towel because, you know, this stuff can get a little messy. And I saw, oh my gosh, it was the greatest idea. Um, the lady from the Nuvo. If you haven't seen my Nuvo, the Tonic Nuvo, she does this little flick thing and it was just like, oh, it was good because it just worked so good. And it was with a different little product. Um, what else did I see? Oh, there was another, um, shiny flick stuff. Cause I like when this is gone, I don't have more. And this is my golden, uh, Heidi shine spray mist, you know, stuff that you use for everything. Um, when I, when this is gone, I don't have more, but I was really happy to see that there are some other options out there and why don't they make more? So that's my first question. Why don't they make more? 
but I was really happy there's some other options. Um, Spellbinders actually had some, and theirs is really cute. It comes like almost like in a little nail polish bottle, and then you can just like flick it from the little thing, and that was really cute. There, oh, Ruth says, have you used the Spellbinders one? It's my fave. So no, I hadn't, but Spellbinders um, hooked us up. They gave me two of their little goodie bags for, um, they did a little session. Oh my gosh. So behind the scenes story, they did a little session where you, um, uh, can go, they invite some of their influencers and people that share stuff online. And, uh, they had a little bag for us there and, uh, they made sure there's um, one of them in there and they hooked me up with two of those bags so that I could give one out during load. So there's definitely some of that heading to somebody during the, during the load challenge. So I was pretty happy about that. Oh, this, this is funny. Part of this didn't stay up in the bottle. Okay. You go there, stay. <laughs> okay, so let's get messy. Oh yeah, this is gonna be way cuter. And sometimes when you don't get the dots exactly where you kind of want them, you just kind of like touch your little, the end of your little thing on here. And that seems to be pretty good too. So there, ah, uh, yeah. So I know that they had given me that. What else was in the bag? Do you guys want a preview of what's in the bag? Cause it was, a. Uh, it's, uh, it had some fun things in it. I can give you a sneak peek. I'm fun with, I'm good with that. Okay, so here we go. And there's that. Oh, do I have any papers or anything to pick up the rest of this rather than using my paper towel? Those papers are not the right ones. There's like a little scrap. I can use some of that. Okay. I'll move that here. I'm just gonna like daub some of this onto this other little paper. And I don't know if I need it for something, but I might. So, you know, at least then I have like a little piece that's covered with little daubs of pretty, um, pretty stuff. Okay. So that's gonna sit over here and take a little time out. Um, Kathy says she's going to sift through now and use some. She, she's done two pages with it already though. Ooh. Uh, oh, from Tuesday morning. I missed that part. Sorry. <laughs> I spent over a hundred dollars. Almost at a thousand at Tuesday morning, a hundred dollars. Ooh, because you know, I need things. <laughs> exactly. Because you know, I need things. I like that. Though. That could be like a good quote. Okay, let's have a look inside the Spellbinders bag. Okay, first of all, can we look at this bag? How cute is this? It is like such a cute bag. So that is the, it's like totally a purse. And then inside, look at the lining. Okay, so I am obsessed with bags. Um, if you caught our scrap happy movie night the other day, then, um, you will have realized that cause I shared the video from tonic tonic has bags. And so if you haven't seen that, you can catch my creativation video either on my YouTube channel or on the scrap happy blog. There's a link to all of the creativation videos kind of in alphabetical order, but yeah, the, the tonic Nuvo bags video <laughs> kind of revealed my obsession with purses and bags. But yeah, lovely yellow interior. And then there's some fun things inside. So this is actually some of that stuff that, was it Ruth that was saying? Um, here, let's just open it because we want to look. Yeah. 
So it's like a little nail polish bottle. It's kind of all sealed up right now. And yeah, you shake it up really good. You can hear it. And then yeah, use it to like flick the little shiny stuff on there. So fun. Um, purses and coats for me, says Diane. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So that's what's in there. And then they have this beautiful sequin packet. Lots of sequins in there. Super shiny and pretty. Do they still say FSJ? Yes. What does FSJ mean? I, I don't even know. Can someone help me? <laughs> and like, I'm like, spell binders. Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> And then there is a beautiful metal die in here. Fun Stamper's Journey. Oh my gosh, that's fun. Uh, and then uh, there is a stamp set as well. And then their catalog is in here too. And so there's a stamp set in there. So all of those things, super fun in the lovely bag. And that is going to go to somebody from Load. So that should be fun. <laughs> Sister company to spell binders. Yeah. Fun stamper journey. So yeah, that's what the bag says. It's really cute. Okay. Let's bring my layout back and my photo that I have already misplaced. And I need some more layers. So I think I need to bring in some of the green. And I'm not finding the, oh, no, I'm not finding the green. Oh, this is like a bonus paper. So you've got this, and then you've got this on the back, but you could like totally use this as well. Like it's totally usable. That would be fun. You kind of have like a little peek of all of these things behind. Okay. Um, oh, it's on the back of this cut apart is the green. Mm, am I going to want to do that? Okay, it'll be fine, right? There's a saying on here that says, I'm just here for the butter beer. <laughs> I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. Uh, the only way out is through JK Rowling. And then it has the nine and three quarters. There's some cute glasses, a lightning bolt here. Uh, the little, a little white owl sitting on a pile of books, potions and spells, magic 101, wizard history. <laughs> Super fun. Uh, yeah, uh, Karen says, Ruth, didn't Fun Stamper's Journey sell from home consultants? And she says, yes, they did. So I've not actually heard of that company. Um, maybe we didn't have it here in Canada. I don't know. Okay, I think a little of this green would be awfully nice on here, or I should use the blue. Should I use the blue? No, I think I like the green. Okay, I'm going to do the green. Even though I have to cut into my beautiful cut apart sheet. Okay, I'm going to do it. Um, like I'm gonna totally kill the cup okay so that might save something on there okay. okay let's put that under there oh yeah that's good and I think I need a little piece of white cardstock and Karen says oh I thought they went out of business mm -hmm. literally I have no idea but Bags are cute, for sure. Okay. Perfect. 
So I just cut like a little teeny tiny little mat for going around there because I just wanted just like a little hint of that white sticking out there. And Okay. Yeah, so what um Yeah, so if you've seen videos out of Creativation, which line or which product were you like, "Oh, I can't wait. I just can't wait." Cuz like I have several obviously because I saw so many things, but is there something that just like made your heart kind of go pity pat and you're like that will be coming home with me because <laughs> yeah I saw a few things but I got to see like lots of stuff okay so my title's gonna go on here and I think I'll just call it very much Hagrid's Hut because I don't really I am not the queen of titles let me tell you um Ruth says um, I saw some great travel lines. Vicki Booten, her Let's Wander collection, super nice. And the other one I can think of off the top of my head, Simple Stories. Yeah, Simple Stories, their travel line. <laughs> so nice. Um, what was it? Um, something like about Escape. Oh, I, oh, I do have it here. Um, everything is like just barely here. <laughs> so, simple stories. Their travel line is called Going Places. Um, they have these words that are like kind of like puffy words with this beautiful font and oh, lovely. Uh, Jacqueline says, oh yeah, and Deidre says I really like all the puffy words. And Jacqueline says I have pre-ordered the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris die for cards. Oh my goodness, right? Um, it's so cool. Like it opens and it looks kind of like the the shutter on a camera where it like opens. Yeah, I don't know any other way to describe it. Magic iris, super cool. Okay, so Hagrid's hut. And I always spell out my titles on the edge of a clear ruler because it Let's me kind of line things up here. Yeah, so that was kind of fun. Um, there was a couple interesting things like the Heidi Swap toner ink made people really excited. Um, and it lets you take your stamps and stamp in this toner ink and then put that with the foil through your mink machine, which is really pretty. The catch was that the ink is really unstable, so you have to prep a disposable ink pad, and then it's only good for a couple of hours, and then you have to throw that out. So it's like a liquid ink that you apply to a disposable pad. And it's just the nature of the, the toner, which is probably why <laughs> there hasn't been toner ink like that kind of released prior to this. Uh, And uh, let's see, and forest something from crepe paper, magical forest maybe. Um, let's see, I did Maggie Holmes and crepe paper I think together. Uh, I'm to look at the back, magical forest. It had some unicorns and kids and animals and toadstools and some copper as a metallic color. And uh, yeah, it was really funny because like so many of the lines have these rainbows like really tall sketchy rainbows and that was one it did have some of that hi grid's hot oh 
oh, this line, this even has punctuation in these stickers. Look at that. They've got like the little thing that I'll need for, you know, my possessiveness. <laughs> And I have every letter on this one except for a T, which is why I brought out more packages of the same ones. Figured I would be out of a lot of them. And let's see, and it uh, had adorable animals. Yeah, it did. P13 was a new company. Yeah, they are a company out of Poland and their collections so nice pretty 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 papers and they also hooked us up for a load like super good so I'm excited about that it's lovely prices okay so hangers hat that's gonna kind of blend right into that I didn't think about that when I picked this yellow did I so I think as a variation to this um, underneath so I kind of have the title and it sits kind of on top of a line that kind of stretches beyond like my my mats and I think what I'll do is I'll take a wider strip and put my title on that wider strip to kind of compensate for that and that will work good so why do I want it a little wider than my letters? Okay. And then I've got a strip of this red and then I can kind of layer that in here that yeah that'll look better okay and cut that here okay Actually, I might want us to cut another little strip of that green if I can. What did I do with the green paper? It was this one. Okay. Add a little more of that, I think. Red almost looks different just because the other one was just right next to that yellow. So I think the green is actually a better choice. Cool. And Hagger Tut. And I need to cut just a little bit off of this. Oh, um, yeah. So P13 was another collection that I had really enjoyed uh, seeing really, really pretty papers. Um, yeah, but lots of really fun things, lots of beautiful collections. Jamel's line was super nice. Maggie Holmes' collection had some really cool elements in it. Um, she had this rainbowy paper that I just fell in love with. It was like a wonky rainbow in some ways. I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, I just have to see her collection. Um, and it was called, oh shoot, um, Sweet Story. Yeah, uh, where did I put my adhesive runner? I've already lost it. <laughs> How did that happen? I've just barely got started and I'm already losing things. This is why I need more space, right? And I spread out and I can still see everything. Um, here we go. It's not the same one, but it'll work. Uh, and Jacqueline said the lilac scented embossing powder from Emma Creek is also on my list. Yes. 
<laughs> All I can say is yes, because I love lilacs and it totally smelled like, like lilacs. Like it was good. So I thought that was really fun. Okay. Yes. Um, so tomorrow is my son's 21st birthday, my oldest son, and he's hosting his own birthday party. <laughs> So I'll, I'll bring a few things with me and stuff, but yeah, he invited everybody over. He's like, I'm having a birthday party. I'm like, that's awesome. And if I don't have to do all the planning and stuff, that's incredible. <laughs> and I did not do that transfer very nicely at all. Hmm. It usually goes much, much better. <laughs> there, once that's on, this is looking pretty good. So I'm pretty excited um, about getting all some, getting caught up with some scrapbooking. And it's not like I'm like caught up. I just feel like I haven't done a lot of scrapbooking so far this year. And I, you know, I want to do better. I want to get more scrapbooking done, not like, you know, step back and be like, oh, I really didn't do much this year. Um, so yeah, because I felt like I haven't accomplished much for scrapbooking so far this year, I need to uh, step it up with load. I guess I did make my Christmas card mini album and I haven't exactly been a slacker, let's say, but you know, I just don't feel like I've made a lot of, I haven't made a lot of layouts yet this year. So I've made some project. Okay, this looks good. And I can probably take these now. Let's have a look. Oh, some of that's not dry yet. We can layer. I think I want them to layer over that layer, but under this layer. No, maybe over top. Yep, they'll sit on top so they can sit there and just continue to dry. If they're not drying a little bit, I'll pat the top down with the paper towel, but for now, I'll just let it be. Okay. And then I need to leave some space for some strips at the bottom. And I don't know that I want the strips to be all just white. Hmm. I'll have to look and see what else I can maybe use. Oh, my other adhesive is right here. So now I have two. <laughs> Couldn't see it for looking at it. <laughs> yep. Oh, and I really liked that paper too. Mm. Yeah, so, yes. Birthday party tomorrow. Gotta get my scrapbook page done. Make sure everybody is getting where they need to be for a load. And make sure that we have some tutorials for working a couple of the things. Just that might help for anybody that doesn't know where to find things. It's all on the master page. <laughs> if you're like, what is this load thing that she keeps talking about? We're doing a challenge, layout a day challenge. And uh yeah, it's a lot of fun. This time is inspired by Harry Potter, but every time we do a different theme. And um, so last year, let's see, what did we do? We did one inspired by the Wizard of Oz. We had one in October. The October one is kind of like a by the members for the members load. And so it's only available for the members. You can't um, come and join it if you're not a Scrap Happy member. And that one was based, inspired by Tom Hanks. We called it T Hanks, 
thanks a lot. <laughs> T. Hanks a lot. Uh, super fun because he's done so many amazing movies and Actually, it was really fun because I, I might not have scrapbooked every day during that one. Actually, I know I didn't scrapbook every day, but I actually watched quite a few Tom Hanks movies that month. <laughs> I watched a lot of them. So, you know, there's always fun to be had, <laughs> whether it's necessarily in the scrapbooking or not, apparently. <laughs> um, Let's see, uh, we've done a load that was inspired by um, internet memes. And it was funny because my, I had a few people like really give me like the eyebrow look when, when I announced that topic. They were like, memes were going to ins be like inspired by memes. But uh, I haven't seen the Mr. Mr. Rogers one yet. No. Um, but yeah, they were like, internet memes. And then I'm like, but don't worry, we're not going to be like all negative negative because so many of them are super negative. I'm like, that's not fun to scrapbook. <laughs> like we'll kind of like adventure near like things that kind of can be sad or, you know, upsetting or something, but I don't usually like to go digging down into the muck. That's not like the fun place to scrapbook from. Like, you know, if you want to go there, go there. But I usually my prompts are kind of like, hmm, there's this terrible little thing. But when we look at the opposite of it, <laughs> you know, so I kind of tend to look for a more positive spin on things. And we had a fun month. And I think the girls that were kind of doubters on that one were totally, um, they came around. <laughs> But I know Diana says I did. <laughs> I'm not sure if you came around or if you saw the Mr. Rogers movie. <laughs> but um, yeah, my Natalie from our group, she was telling me, she's like, I didn't think that, that was going to be fun. Like when you said memes, I'm like, I don't even know. But the ones I've seen, that's not inspiring. And, and then it all came together and it was good. So it, uh, it is what you make of it, right? Yeah, she saw the movie and it was great. <laughs> and then we also, oh my gosh, we did the Greek goddess one. So we talked about a Greek god or goddess every day. And then we scrapbooked inspired by them. And that was fun. We did one based on magic before. Um, we've done one, oh, um, Legends of Hollywood. That was a, oh my gosh, this is like super fun. I love taking the little trip down memory lane. Legends of Hollywood. That was, um, we took movies through the ages and we kind of covered a few from every decade. And oh my gosh, cutting down that list was nearly impossible. But we covered a few from every decade and kind of spanned different genres and we talked about the history of them. And then we did one called Broadway, oh shoot, what was it, Broadway Rhythms? Um, and then um, Sue actually led us through that one because she was totally like knowledgeable about this. And so we did one that was all inspired by Broadway. And like, I was so glad that she was like stepping up because like that was, it was just brought something totally new and the stories and the um, just learning about the details behind things like that was super fun. Um, yeah. And then like the whole time it's like, I'm still telling my stories and using my pictures and, you know, creating my pages. And obviously I'm not making pages about Broadway, but it tells, it inspires me to tell a different story than what I maybe would before. Heather said that was probably my best completion rate on that one. Um, Diane said Greek goddess would have been a great, they all sound good. So Diane, I think you're a member, right? Um, if you have like Scrap Happy membership, you can actually go under that members only tab. There is a, um, a link that says past load challenges and all of the ones since I have been leading Scrap Happy are on there. So I've got links to all of them. You can go, I've got all the master pages linked. So, cause that's always the place that we 
um, go for the challenge. So I put all the master pages on that one pass load challenge page, and then you can go in and you can look at all of them, which is super fun and amazing um, to go and do. If you try to go and join the Flickr, like probably we're not going to let you into that thing because you weren't there for the live part of it, but um, we're not on Flickr anymore. We're going to have it all in house. Oh gosh, I'm so excited. Uh, okay, so I need my something for strips here. I don't know if I want to try to add strips now. Undecided. Okay, I think I'm not going to add the strips now. I think I'm going to do a little bit of embellishment. I'm going to stick this down. Oh gosh, I love do this. Have any, do you have any washi that would work? This would be a good place for washi tape. This would be a good place for washi tape. I like it. <laughs> she knows my stash. <laughs> She's like, um, do you have any washi tape, Alice? <laughs> uh, yes, I, I probably do. <laughs> so... Yeah, there, there, there may or may not be. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring it right over here. We can look. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Washi tape. I have drawers. This is like the golden drawer, and there's like some neutrals and browns back there. Uh, we got pinks mostly pinks <laughs> up here and then we've got some yellows and some halloween ones in the back and some purples and then we've got some greens and the christmasy ones are kind of back here and then we got some blues and teals and then down here we got the black and whites kind of section so i imagine i probably have a few and i thought actually i thought i had one to think of what I had. I had one sitting here just recently. Oh no, that was a Christmas one. I was gonna say, like, there was one that I was like, hmm, I need to put that away. <laughs> but it was kind of a Christmassy one. So I could pop that in right now. And look at me, I like cleaned up and everything. <laughs> Elizabeth is a um I have more sigh. It's a problem. <laughs> I read that out loud, just so you know. She sent that privately to me, but I confessed your, your <laughs> I confessed on your behalf. <laughs> I just saw that that it was said. Um, how many Harry Potter ones does she have? Is the question says Heather. I don't know that I have any actually. Um, Harry, that would I'm surprised actually, <laughs> but I can't think of having any. So oh, I don't know. I do have a Harry Potter stamp set, just in case I need to fit something like this on here before I forget. Uh, this one is from Ink Road, <laughs> from this person that has seven rolls. You have seven rolls of Harry Potter watchy tape? I don't even know that I've seen her. I must have seen it somewhere, but I don't have any. I'm pretty sure I don't have any. For me to like not have bought it, that's almost amazing all in itself. Oh, total, total. <laughs> I can't even imagine what it was like to only have seven rolls anymore. <laughs> okay. So we got Hagrid's Hut. We've got um, words are our most inexhaustible source of magic. After all this time, always. The snake quote. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I, that's got to go on here, right? Because that's Hagrid, right? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> okay, let's think about where that's going to fit. And I will make a little thing for it. I think I'd like it here. Um, I think it's time to bring these stars over and get them into the page. Oh, that's hilarious. I thought that this paper, it looked super adhesive or um, absorbent, not adhesive. So I thought it would be like all soaked in, but 
it's not. Now I want them, so hurry up and dry. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks good. Little shiny golden stars. Oh, here we go. We'll take some shiny golden stars here and some shiny golden stars here. And, oh, there's a little piece of this in the middle that didn't get cut out. And it will look so much cuter if we do that. Not there. There. And then I thought I might use the cut apart sheet to cut out an image. Um, that's not it. I've got this paper right in the way. Oh, it was the green one. I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. I think that would be a good quote to have with my kids and I think I left it available on here. Cool. So I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to tuck it in here. So we're venturing off the sketch. <laughs> we're venturing off sketch. But I like that it's on the yellow too, because that'll really stand out and pop on this page. Actually, if I pulled out some, um, I bet you I have some yellow cardstock that I could use for the strips at the bottom that would look really good. So I don't think that my washi tape will uh, be, I won't be able to print on it very nice. So I don't know if that would work. Oh, here I go. I'm sticking things to my. Okay, so if I go back to my sketch, it's funny, I meandered off the sketch, but then I came back to it. You guys are gonna be shocked. Well, I, I am. <laughs> um, let's see, what have I done with it? I thought I put it there. I've got too many things here, I gotta move this. I gotta keep my stamp handy so I don't lose it. And what have I done with it? Got fun things. I thought I set it up there. Okay, well, I don't know what I've done with it. It's not sitting there anymore. But up in the top corner of the sample layout, there was kind of like a little globe in the background of that page. And so I'm going to use this little card and I'm going to tuck that. I'm not going to tuck it because I want to be able to read all the words off of it, but it's going to kind of sit in a similar location as that. And I think that's kind of fun. So. I've stumbled my way back. <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> so it's going to kind of go up in here, like that little uh, globe image that I had on the first layout. And I think that's going to be kind of fun. Okay. Is that sticking? Oh. I think that adhesive runners out. <laughs> so obviously I needed the other one anyways. Unless I grabbed the one that was empty. And then I'll have those little strips down here and I think this here, I need to do like a little cluster of things right here. I think that's going to be good. Um, so this I need to stamp onto some paper. So I think I should grab that yellow cardstock right now. Um, Elizabeth said I was the, the load entry winner. Yay! Oh, I didn't realize that you're the Elizabeth that's here. That's super fun. <laughs> 
and you didn't even know she could send a private message. Well, you're learning all the things. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so I definitely have this kind of yellow um, for a card stock. So I'm going to grab that. Oh, it's pretty good. It's like super close. I don't know if I could like, you know, be closer than this. So, of course these aren't stuck down. But I'm gonna hold things up so show you. <laughs> so look how good that is. Like super good, right? It's pretty close. And that'll look good on there. And then, I did different lengths and I actually typed some on that last layout. <laughs> I don't know if that's happening today, <laughs> but I'm going to cut a couple of strips anyways. I think I can probably fit three that are of a decent size enough for me to write onto. Mm. Let's see. One. Two. Oh, maybe if I make them a little skinnier, I could fit. No, I think it'll be good. Three. Yeah, so there we go. I'll fit those onto there and add some journaling to those. Uh, stick. I can stick down my stars. Let's do that. And I want to stamp this onto a strip, so I'm gonna need another strip anyways. The chances are good that I'll uh, mess up my journaling and need another strip anyways. <laughs> okay. It just might happen. Um, Let's see, Diane says, this is my first load as well. I cannot wait and I need a jump start. Oh, her battery is low. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're going to join us for load for your scrappy jump start because, okay, so I have my personal story. I am not the creator of the load mm. challenge and I am not the person who started the scrap membership group speaking of batteries being low <laughs> um but i've been running it now for over four years and i absolutely love it and the reason that i joined the scrap happy group as a member was that i um i took a low challenge and i signed up completely on a whim and it was so fun. Um, I, I loved how the challenges got me thinking about my pages in a very different way. And so when I, uh, oh, you won't be the only one new. <laughs> Nadine says, me too. I'm, 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 she's, I'm glad I'm not the only newbie. No. Um, so yeah, I was thinking about my pages in a whole different way because a lot of the prompts not all of them back then, but a lot of them started with the story. And usually when I sat down, I sat down with pictures and I struggled to find that story. So now there I was starting with the story. And it was amazing because the journaling just like flowed. It just came <laughs> because I knew what the story was before I even started. I found the pictures to help tell that story. So it was a really different approach to scrapbooking for me. And it's not like they're all like that. Like um, nowadays we actually do a story and a technique prompt. So you can kind of go in any direction you like. But for me, like the stories changed a lot of my scrapbooking. So, so that was really fun. And uh, I've really enjoyed getting the chance to, uh, you know, create the challenges. Oh my gosh, I have like the best time planning. And, you know, I bring different people in with me to, to help sort out the plans for the different load challenges. And then we have different 
um, member activities within the group every month and we do this and we have other things too. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So I feel like I'm in such a good place with where I am, but I'm so much more productive. My pages, I create more of them, but I create more of them that I really like that have a lot more meaning. So Karen says, uh, let's see. Uh, Heather asked, um, yes, yeah, she said that there will be email prompts and they'll be posted to the Scrap Happy page. Um, oh, hold on. Yeah, the prompts, they you actually get a link in the email. So I don't actually put all the prompt information in the email. It's the link to the blog page. So log into your account, make sure that you're, you know, you can easily get into your um stuff and then every day you'll get the little link in the email and if your email fails just go straight to that master page you know all the links are on there but um yeah and then every day you can use that prompt to kind of spark your story so it's kind of fun um spark your story or you look at your pictures and because there's a technique thing maybe maybe that that technique is going to inspire something and we also have a featured layout every day and sometimes the way that you see that person actually use it you're like because sometimes you hear the prompt and you're like i have nothing I, I i don't i don't know what to do with that like i can't do anything with that but then you see the sample page and you're like oh i totally have a story like that like that happens all the time so it's really fun um see. Uh, Karen says, I bet most of us could say that's how we got started here. Yeah. I try to load. That was amazing. I joined the Scrap Happy family. It's kind of, it's this natural progression because once you want to try one load, it's kind of like, I don't want to miss out on any of this. This is too fun. <laughs> that, that was pretty much where it was for me. Um, I need some little sparkly bits. Um, just like little golden sparkly bits. Those will work. Right. Oh, there are lots of different sizes. Hmm. It's not what I was envisioning, but I guess it'll do. <laughs> It, it'll be different than I envisioned, but it will be great. <laughs> right? uh, that was me too, says Dion. I try to load and I'm still here loving each one. Well, that's awesome. And that means that I'm doing it right. So <laughs> I like, I like to know that I'm, I'm making it that be the thing that you need to kind of be able to do the scrapbooking and crafting that you want to do and you know if if that's what's happening then that's amazing because i'm not opposed to changing things within the membership and um you know trying new things i'm i'm totally cool um i think that we need to have scrap happy like we call it a scrap happy family and um i think that for me it's um it's a family when everybody's kind of pitching in and saying, Hey, this is, this, this is good. And this works. And you know, these are the things that I want. And, um, Elizabeth says, how long did it take you to prepare a load event? So that's a really mixed thing. Um, <laughs> because like, there's like the, the, the theme ideas, right? Like you're always, I'm always thinking about themes for good loads. Like I keep a note on my phone all, at all times and just with different ideas that might be really fun idea for doing a challenge about. And, you know, it has to have enough breadth of topic that, you know, we can cover a full month. <laughs> and Sharon says she got here through Debbie Hodge. Last year I did Calvin Ball and loved it. Oh my gosh. If um, you haven't tried Calvin Ball, it's something to experience. 
<laughs> it is something to experience. Yes, we, we did Calvin Ball last year and I had a blast with that. And Debbie said that, you know, she was closing her membership and hey, Alice, would you be interested in taking on Calvin Ball? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would. That would be fun. But yeah, so building the low challenge, like themes. Um, yeah, I'm always thinking about themes and different ideas of things that will make a good challenge. And now that we have the mini ones that like we do in the summer, we do it August little mini load and it's just seven days. And so sometimes a theme that's maybe not big enough or broad enough to do a whole month can be turned into a mini challenge. So that's been kind of a nice option to have as well. And then um, from there, it's sitting down. Usually I, I bring somebody in to work with me. I was like, just my awesome magical cape here. Um, I bring somebody in to kind of work with me and kind of brainstorm with me about the prompts and we kind of work together for Harry Potter, my friend Natalie from our group, she said, I'm in, I'm in, I'm your girl. <laughs> and oh my goodness, she actually brainstormed with her husband and son and everybody was in. I'll come back to the Calvin Ball thing. Um, but yeah, I, uh, and her husband came up with the idea for day 29. I can't wait. I'm dying to share day 29, but we have to wait. <laughs> I will not give any hints. I will not give any peaks. We will get there. It will be amazing. And you'll be like, that was so perfect. Like it was the perfect prompt for the day. So I can't wait. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's really fun. So Calvin Ball. Um, oh, and then, you know, at, once the theme is there and we come up with like the prompts, then it's like, you know, defining the prompts a little bit more and coming up with a story and coming up with a technique for every day, you know, making sure that you kind of have like a little explanation about the idea uh, behind like the inspiration behind like the, the things. So like when we talked about the Greek goddesses, I told you about the goddess and the story and what that goddess is known for. Um, with Harry Potter, we'll explore some of the characters and the themes and the imagery and different things like that. Um, and then, yeah, and so you come up with your stories and your technique prompts, and then it's getting the background stuff all created and videos. And because every day there's a little um, a video that kind of introduct introduces things. So every day you see that. And then we have our feature designers and I go to our scrap happy family and I say, Hey, would anybody like to create pages for a load? And it's amazing. Everybody's like, I'll do it. And I'm like, fantastic. This was so easy. <laughs> and you know, there's a, a lot of bits cause you're bringing all the pieces in and getting things ready. But yeah, it's amazing. Um, Becky said, I was overwhelmed by the end of load last year and couldn't fathom starting Calvin Ball. Maybe I'll try to keep going this year. So great story about that. And I don't have the video up yet because of um, all the stuff with load prep. But a couple of our gals that were, um, they did load last February and then they wanted to keep going, but they hadn't. And then they started in May and they're like, we're going to keep going this time. They have been scrapbooking every day since May 1st. And I'm like, yes, go Rochelle, go Stacy. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So it's a, yeah, there's a bit of work, a lot of love. Yeah, definitely. What was your favorite item from Creativation this year? Oh, that's a really hard question. Um, one thing that I'm excited by because I love thickers and alpha stickers, Simple Stories coming out with a whole collection of colors of alpha, alpha stickers, um, like foamy ones. And I'm really excited about that. Um, I really like the um, dye from the um, Concord and Ninth. It's like an possible circle die or infinity circle and you turn it and you turn it and like that was really cool for scrapbooking oh, I don't know it's really hard to pick one thing like that's nearly impossible 
Um, so Calvin Ball, somebody said, what is Calvin Ball? Cynthia, I think, said, what is Calvin Ball? So Calvin Ball is a challenge that was started in the, you know, <laughs> um, it was started in the um, Get It Scrapped community by some of their members, and they were doing, um, and it's inspired by Calvin and Hobbes. So the little cartoon, the little boy with his tiger, um, they actually play a game. They play their own version of sports because Calvin's really not into sports the way people normally do them. And in his version of sports, um, they, the rules kind of change and they make them up as they go and they award random amounts of points for different things. And it's, it's a very fluid experience when he plays sports. Um, so they create a scrapbook challenge that works the same way. So your idea is to collect points and, you know, one day you might get points for using yellow on your page. And then you might get points for putting a star on your page and you might get points for putting a sparkle on your page and you might get points for using three pictures or more. And maybe you get points for, you know, um, having a sticker or having a avocado or <laughs> like all the random things on your page. And so you kind of tally up your points every time you create. So the interesting part is that some of the rules stay and some of the rules change and they go. And I took over the challenge last year and I took the intention of the challenge and I said, okay, how do I do this right? I consulted some of the best Calvin ballers in the business, some of the ones that get the top points and they gave me totally different ideas of how the points are supposed to work. And I said, okay, so nobody really knows. <laughs> or everybody has their own interpretation of the rules. And that was just so Calvin Ball-esque that I thought that was just perfect. So we made, we had rules. There was new rules added every single day to the list. And you keep track of your points and you have tallies. And it was, um, it was a really fun thing. Um, the points are just for honor and glory and saying, I got all these points. And it was just a fun way to kind of get involved in scrapbooking. And some people are creating like, I'm talking like 10 plus pages a day. And some people are getting like a ton of points on every layout because they had a hedgehog and an avocado and uh, you know, like all of the crazy things on there. And then, yeah, we, we did a backwards points day or something like that where, oh, the non-stackable rules. So people, people said you, if you wanted to get points, you needed a star and you needed a sparkle. You couldn't use a sparkly star to get two points. And I said, well, I think that makes only sense if you can, like makes it easier to make your page. But then we had a day where you couldn't stack rules. And so you had to use a sparkle and a star separate to get points. And I don't know, like it was, it was a lot of fun. It's totally crazy. It's like impossible almost like unless you were like into it, it's impossible to stay on top of all of it. But I think it's the kind of thing that you pop into and say, I'm just going to play with it where I am right now. And oh my gosh, it was so fun. And the girls that are like, way into it it's amazing like you watch you see the pages and oh it's super fun and it's about using your stash exactly Jeanette says it's great for forcing you to use your stash and then some <laughs> um yeah Jojo says I love Calvin Ball last year was doing great until uh she went to a day a four-day retreat out of state and she kind of got behind looking forward to load and Calvin ball. So yeah, Calvin ball happens in March. Once load is over, if you want to like pop in straight into Calvin ball, it's totally a free challenge. There's like nothing paid about it. We ran it through Facebook last year. I'm going to talk with my tech guy about options for not necessarily being on Facebook this year, but I'm really not sure yet. We'll have to see. It might run on Facebook again. I just don't know yet. We'll have to see. Um, 
either way I plan to, like it's going to be a free challenge. So I want to make sure that that's compatible with the way the site's set up. I, new things. I'm learning new things. <laughs> Yeah, and Jan says, I got into it more and more as the days progressed, but I didn't stress about the points. I did it, it did make it fun to see what I could include, and then I wanted to include on my pages. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's about still scrapbooking for you, but having all these little challenges that just allow you to incorporate a little bit of fun into it. Okay. Um, my page is sitting here and I've just been talking because surprise, surprise, that happens. Um, so I think that we should do a, a draw, right? We should do a draw. Um, let's have a look here. I've got to have a look. We've got 30 people on and one of them is me. So that means there's 29 of us here right now for the draw. I'm going to pull up a random number generator. Uh, let's see, I need a new page. Random number generator. Oh, that took me to a Wikipedia page that told me what that was. <laughs> That's not what I was looking for. Okay, because it's really easy. There's like one that pulls up. So 29 people hit the generate button and it says 11. So I go down the list and count one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Cynthia, fancy scrapper, you are our gal today. Congratulations. You have to email me. So please send me an email. Uh, support at scraphappy.org, and I will get you hooked up so that you can get your free kit from the Wild Hair Kit. They are amazing. So let me tell you about the Wild Hair Kits because I'm not using one of the kits right now. I feel kind of bad because I ordered it late. Um, it's a custom curated kit club. So you don't have to, or you don't have to commit to anything. It's not like you have to or get a new one every month. You don't have to get um, a certain size of kit all the time. They're totally custom. So it's kind of like having the best surprise box ever because it's designed for you with the style that you want, in the theme that you want, with the designers that you want. All of the things are custom for you. So you fill out a style profile which is super easy. They've got some graphics. Do you like this? How do you feel about it? And it's kind of like get it in my mailbox now kind of thing. If that vibe is your thing. And then it's like, meh, you know, it's okay. So depending on what you like, you kind of fill out this little style profile and then you have the chance to say, I love getting these things in my box. Please don't give me these things. And it's just like lots of it is little selecting. And if there's special things that you've had before from them, then you're like, I really like it when you send me your custom sequin packs, which I really love <laughs> because they team up with um, some really fun companies to make some custom sequins. So let me have a look here. Uh, I have a lot of sequins here. <laughs> But actually, it's really funny because I don't have a lot of my custom ones with the um, wild hair. Here's an example. I don't have a lot of my custom ones because I've used them up so much during our live things. Um, I don't have a lot of their custom ones. And sometimes they're not, I don't know if they're all the custom ones, but lots of them are. So this is just one of them. This one's from Spiegel Mom Scraps. And cute little sequins. There was more in there, but it's obviously used up some of them. Oh yes, I have used that one. Um, but yeah, cute little sequin packs that I love. And there's, um, you know, sometimes you get die cut pieces and you can always kind of specify, I really like it if you include your die cuts. I want cardstock with my stuff so that it can match with your papers. I, you can get like the petite kit, you can get a larger kit, the deluxe kit. So two different options. When you win a kit, you actually get the deluxe kit. So you get like the bigger kit of the, of the two with more fun things in it. Um, and then you can order a kit like whenever you want. 
If you like doing double page layouts, you let her know and she'll make sure that you have some papers to do base pages so that you can do that. Um, Elizabeth says, I love that sequins don't take up much space to store. I know I've got like a few of them here and it's like tiny little space, lots of, lots of delicious sequins. Um, so yeah, I really love the kits that I get and because they're put together with my personality and my tastes, but it's not all necessarily like matching, um, like from one designer, right? So she knows now that I really love Heidi Swap and I love Paige Evans and I love Chamel, but sometimes there's like other paper lines brought into my pack. And when I get those, I'm like, Ooh, and they go super nicely together. So you can sit down with that kit and you can create pages that mesh well together, but they are not feeling overly designed. So like when I look at this page, it's pretty designery, right? Like all of these pages really, really go together, but it might be other things that coordinate, but not necessarily match so perfectly, if that makes sense. And I really like that. So shout out to them. You can go to thewildhairkits.com and I've gotten her kits and they're really nice, says Ruth. Yeah. I, I just want to say like, I've been working with her as a sponsor for our scrapbook lives for a long time. I personally buy my own kits because I really feel like I want to give you my honest opinion of how much I love it. And you know, there's pages, there's papers, there's a few embellishments that maybe aren't the perfect thing. And when I order my next kit, I'm like, I really like this. And you know, maybe if there's something I really wouldn't like, but I don't know if I've got anything that, I haven't really enjoyed playing with like everything has like amazing potential. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun for me and uh, I like having the variety and um, it's exposed me to different um, paper lines that I wouldn't normally purchase for myself. And sometimes it's like papers that are really usable. And so it's really funny because it's like, I would not have purchased this paper but it's the first one I picked to use on my page because it, I can just see my page being built on it. So that's been another experience of mine with that too. So that's been a fun thing. Uh, Ruth says I've gotten her. Yeah, she's gotten her kits and they're really nice. So my journaling will go onto here onto these strips and I have stamped out my little thing that says, Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> So that's really cute. And I added like those little tiny little sparkly things. That's what I was fiddling around with there for a while. And now I just want to uh, get this kind of put together, but I don't know if like, I won't be doing my journaling while we're live on here, but I think I can stick my little stars on. So I was watching somebody journaling. <laughs> That's not fun. <laughs> not fun at all. <laughs> it's like not the way that we're going to start doing these sessions, but I do try to get them done, try to get them done as quickly as I can afterwards so that I don't have that page sitting there that doesn't have the journaling because <laughs> that that's happened to me in the past. So it's much better if I get them done up right away. Okay, so other than these little strips, um, oh, I may, I may do one more little stamp or something on here, but, you know, I, I finish the page as I do the journaling a little bit more, but here we go. There is my page inspired by that sketch that we had, and if you want to use that sketch, it is available on the scraphappy.org website. Just look under the blog section, and you'll be able to find it there. And yeah, that turned out pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. And maybe I can actually add this picture, like a picture of the layout there. It won't be up here for a little bit, but I'll add the picture there so that I can do that. Ah, uh, Sharon says, I like how you use the stars. Looks great. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was, that was really fun. I love the paper. I love the pictures. And sometimes I do two, two layouts here, but tonight is not a two layout. I am, I am uh, not 
Ooh, I didn't use any of these stickers on there. I'm at, I'm going to throw those on top so that I don't forget them when I'm embellishing that. I don't think this is going to be a two layout night for me because I have to run and make sure that everybody has been entered. I sent out those last minute, last chance emails to get into the load challenge. So that is happening now. Um, we did not have an early bird coupon this time for the low challenge. So I just set the price to $35 US, which is actually like $15 off of the regular price. So if you're like sitting here and you're like, I didn't do the load thing yet. I've been thinking about it. Come and do it. You've got a few minutes before it closes. Like what do we got? Just over an hour right now. So if you're considering it, do that. Um, come and join us, scrabhappy.org slash load, or just go to the site and you'll see the load button in the menu. Um, thanks so much for joining me for this. I really, really enjoy scrapbooking with friends. Did anybody have any show and tell before I go? I, I did not give us that option. Amy says, yes. Awesome. I almost forgot. I'm sorry. I'm going to pull this down here because I can barely reach this here. Okay, so I'm going to give people the chance for some show and tell. And Kathy says, I think I'm going to join Load this year. Well, that'd be fun. Thanks for coming. Like, I, you can tell how much I love it because I'm like obsessed and I won't stop talking. But um, yeah, I just love it. And it's changed scrapbooking for me. So Diane says, yeah, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> and Tina is, says, I'm excited to participate in my first. I got to meet her at Creativation. That was really fun. Um, I'll share what I got so far. My munchkins are coloring in the back right now. Okay, so who wants to go first here? Are you, re are you ready, Kathy? Should I put you up or should I go with Amy first here? We got people ready. Okay, I'm going to pin you up. Can you take your um, mute off? Oh, yeah. There you go. I can hear. Oh, no, it went back. There. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. I went on Pinterest and found a sketch or a layout from Jen Scow, and I just sort of used that to start this layout. So, hi. hi. Oh, my hi. goodness. Yes, hi. Yes, there's a butterfly here. <laughs> Yes, you're going to be on this page because it's a bunch of butterflies on the background. So I used a bunch of six by six. Let me see. Oh my goodness, she's so excited. <laughs> a little crafter too. Butterflies. That's what I have. I don't even have a picture for it, but maybe I'll put her on it because she just popped into this. That's perfect. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Jen Scow stuff is amazing, amazing, and like really functional for scrapbooking. Kathy is my mommy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's super fun. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Bye, Kathy. Bye, Princess. <laughs> well, that's fun. Okay, Amy's got some stuff. I'm gonna pop her up. Okay. Um, yeah, we can this hear is you. My uh, my other brother. I finished the page. It's kind of inspired by the other layout for the uh, group. Nice. Of, uh, Vicky Booten's line there with the wildflower and honey for the embellishments and title there at the bottom. Oh, I love that paper so much. Oh my goodness. And that shiny stuff that you have up top. <laughs> See, a foil. Little, a little foil and shine. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I love it. Super good. Is the paper on the bottom? Is it kind of textured or no? Um, so the background, I actually just took a white cardstock, and then Vicki Booten came out in her last uh, round with this color wheel that's a little metallic round one, uh -huh. and so that was what I was doing at the beginning, was I was using one of these little triangles to use a little bit of, uh, of the um, metallic on the white, and um, so yeah, it kind of looks like a little distressed or textured, just because I didn't make it perfect, but yeah, I made it because it was supposed to be a dark color background, but I just had white paper, so I just made it a, a metallic to go with the gold foiled part background on the top, and then since I had gold, I had to use a lot of yellow flowers and yellow letters for the title, so yeah. Bringing all the warm colors. 
Exactly. Be nice, Amy. I like the different paper choices and Joda's the beautiful ladies. And that was a gorgeous start, Kathy. So we got some good, nice comments happening here. Do we have anybody else that has stuff? Karen, how's your, your digital stuff going? You can share your screen if you like. Uh, she's like, Oh, uh, you don't have to <laughs> just, just giving you the option. <laughs> We, we don't want to leave out our digi gals and if anybody else is here like i'm looking through the pictures oh she's doing it this is good okay but i can't hear you yet can we hear you too there you go yeah there you go. <laughs> all right i was organizing pictures on the other screen um so this is at universal studios florida <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was my first visit to Toothsome's Chocolate Emporium. Oh. I used the December sketch for it. And when I was looking through um, the kit that I was using, I saw these ribbon-like strips, and I thought that would be a cool way to do the bottom instead of using it for journaling. Yeah. Yeah, and then you've got your journaling fit I know up top. So uh, when we do our sketches every every month, um, there's always a PSD file. And so you can use that PSD file for your, your stuff too, right? No, it doesn't work in Artisan. Oh, right. It doesn't work so I recreate in Artisan. It, I recreate it in Artisan. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then here is the November. I did two while you were on. Oh, faster scrapper than me. <laughs> well, I started a little bit before you at four five. Um, but there is the November sketch. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't usually do one photo layouts. Yeah. Um, but I thought I'd stretch myself a little bit and do this one. I do try to mix it up so that not all the sketches are one style. I, I, I promise, like, because I've already... Um, we're working on making sure that we have all the ones for this year uh, a little more on time. I know January is not out. We're going to do it in combination with February though. And uh, yeah, we've got a different variety of numbers of photos for this year because, well, there were last year as well, but I, I like to mix it up because I know some people love one photo layouts and some people really prefer having like multiple photos on a page. So I try yeah. to make sure there's a little something for everybody in there. Well, you'll notice that December one, I put three photos. On. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's like perfect, right? Like you made it do the thing that you needed it to do. And that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks. There should be a stop sharing at the top of your screen. Yeah, let's see. I do Zoom every day here. There we go. There. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And did we have anybody else that wanted to share? Sharon, do you, you, you have anything? Are you like waving at me there? <laughs> and Bonnie? No? Okay. I'm just checking in, just making sure everybody had the chance to, to share. And oh yeah. Um, Dion says she loves your strips that you added, Karen, because they're very different, really beautiful like the digi and the minions is so much fun. So fun. Oh, Bonnie, do you have something to share? No. Okay. I was just checking. I was like, Ooh, Oh, don't want to leave anybody out. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Unless somebody like throw it in the comments and be like me, me. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this scrapbook live for January of 2020. It's our first one this year and we waited right to the end of January. I'm really excited because it has been an exciting start to our year and there are only more good things to come as we move forward through this season. Uh, Scrap Happy is in a really good place right now and with load coming up we have another load coming in Bay which I'm actually kind of already working on behind the scenes. Like, that's kind of how the schedule goes like you're barely getting into one and the next one is kind of getting underway which is uh, kind of fun to have something to always be thinking about. But I'm really excited. If you are interested in some of the stuff that we do, you can come and check us out at scraphappy.org. We have 
fun free events like the Scrapbook Live every month. We also do some Scrap Smarter sessions and yeah, we've got a few things going on. Calvin Ball's coming up in March as well. And then there are other things you can join us for, such as the Load Talent or come and be a member. We have a lot of fun things going on every month, not just during the load months. And then we also have um, a live in-person reunion that we host. So there's, uh, there's a lot happening within our Scrap Happy family. And we'd love to have you come and join us. Okay, for now, this is me signing off and saying happy scrapping. And I can't wait to see you until next time. Let's scrap together. Happy scrapping, everyone. Bye.